Okay, tonight, guys, we're going to learn about factoring quadratic form trinomials. So before we learn how to factor them, we have to know what they are. So a quadratic form trinomial is going to be a trinomial in which the middle term, exponent, is one-half of the first term, exponent. In this case, the middle term is x to the first, and the first term is x to the second. Here's another example. Notice the middle term is 2, and the first term exponent is 4. That's also in quadratic form. We could have x to the 6, and of course then our middle term would be x to the 3rd plus c. c in each of these cases represents a rational number. Now the first ones we're going to look at are those where the leading coefficient, a, a, x squared, where a is equal to 1. Here we have x squared minus 3x plus 2. We're going to factor into two binomials. And then we have x times x. We bring down our first term, which is a minus. And just like previously, we're going to take the operation in negative times the positive and get a negative. So this time, we're going to have operations of subtraction in both of our binomials. Then we're going to ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply and give me 2, that when I add them, I'm going to get 3. Notice the operation on the last term or on the constant is going to tell you whether you're adding or subtracting. In this case, we're adding. Multiply to get 2, add to get 3. 2 and 1. We're always going to put the larger number in the first binomial. So let's look at another example. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Two binomials. x times x, bring down the first sign is a plus, positive times a positive is another positive. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you six. When you add them, you're going to get five. So that would be three and two. Here's another example. This time the, the constant is subtracted. So we're going to do two binomials again, x and x, bring down our first term of positive. Positive times a negative gives me a negative. And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply give us 5, that when we subtract them, we're going to get 4. 5 and 1. Here's another example. Two binomials, x and x, bring down the first term, a negative times a negative is a positive, and then we're going to look for two numbers that multiply and give us 10. When we subtract them, we get 3, 5, and 2. So those are pretty easy, So, and you should have learned most of this in Algebra 1. We're going to move on now to where a is not equal to. So now we're going to look at ax squared where a is not equal to 1. And while there are a number of ways to factor these type of trinomials, and we're going to learn about four or five ways, the first way I'm going to teach you is called the bottoms up method. And we're going to start it much in the same way we did the previous trinomials. We're going to start, when we factor, to, into two binomials. But before, we always could use x and x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 2, and the leading coefficient of 2, and multiply it times the 6. Oh, before I do that... Let's get our signs in here. So we bring down the positive, and a positive times a negative is a negative. 
So now I'm going to get rid of that 2 so that I can put an x in the front of each binomial. So I'm going to multiply the 2 times negative 6 or times 6 and get 12. I'm going to hold that over there for a second and then put my x's in. And so now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply and give me 6 that when I subtract them, I'm going to get 1. Well, we have initially 2 times 6, but when we subtract those, we do not get 1. So then I think of two other numbers that multiply give me 12. So 3 and 4. 3 and 4, when I subtract them, I do indeed get 1. So remember, I told you we always put the bigger absolute value number first. So it would be 4, so 4 comes first, and then 3. But we have a little problem here. We need a 2 in front of one of those x's. So we got rid of the 2 by multiplying it by 6. So now we're going to get the 2 back by dividing both constants by 2. We simplify them, and the first one becomes x plus 2. In the second one, it is simplified as much as it can be. So here's where the bottoms up method comes in. We take that 2 and we bottom on the bottom and we bring it up, giving us 2x minus 3. This gives us the two factors of our trinomial 2x squared plus x minus 6. And we should check ourselves. We have, oops, sorry. We have x times 2x gives us the 2x squared. Then we have 2 times negative 3, which gives us our back term, our constant term of negative 6. And then we notice if we take x times negative 3, we get negative 3x. And then 2 times 2x is positive 4x. If we put those together, combine those, we're going to get positive 4x and negative 3x which gives us our middle term of positive 1x. So, yep, checking our work, it does indeed work. Here's another example, 3x squared minus 11x minus 20. So, two binomials, and we bring down our first sign, which is minus, and then a negative times a negative is a positive, and then we take our 3, we multiply it by 20, and we get 60. We can now put our x's into our binomials, and then we ask ourselves, we're looking for two numbers that multiply and give us 60, that when we subtract them, we're going to get 11. Well, if we subtract 3 from 20, we're going to get 17. So that is not 11, so we can't use that one. So then we maybe go up one. 4 times, what number gives me 60? 4 times 15. When we subtract 4 from 15, we get 11. That is the number we want. So we're going to, again, put the larger of 15 and 4 in a first binomial. So we have 15 here and 4 here. Once again, we have to compensate for that multiplication by 3 by dividing each of the constants by 3. Now we simplify, and this becomes x minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then we bottoms up our 3, giving us 3x plus 4. Here's another example. 6x squared minus 7x minus 20. Two binomials. Bring down a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. And then we multiply 6 times 20. Which, and I'm just going to write it as 6 times 20 but it's 120. So again, we're looking for two numbers that multiply give us 20, that when we subtract them, we're going to get 7. So we put our x's in the binomials. Remember, we're subtracting to get 7. 6 from 20 is going to give us 17, no, it's not 17, 14. And 14 is not 7, so that's not going to work. We can use another technique, rather than just going up by 1, is dividing the first one in half. When we divide 6 
divided by 2, we're going to get 3. And then we can multiply the other factor by 2, which gives us 40. Because 3 times 40 is also going to give us 120. But when we subtract them, we get 37. So that does not work either. And we can do other things, like divide the second factor by 10, which gives us 4. And that would mean we would have to multiply the first factor by 10, which gives us 30. And when we subtract those, we get 26. And it's kind of like a method of guess and check. But I like to just keep changing the factors I have into something else. So, for example, if we double 4, we get 8. That means we would have to take half of the first factor, which would be 15. And when we subtracted those, we do indeed get 7. So that means that we're going to use the factors 15 and 8. Again, the larger of 15 and 8 goes in the first binomial, and then 8 goes in the second binomial. We have to divide by 6. We're going to simplify both, and in this case, 15 divided by 6, 3 goes into 15 5 times, 3 goes into 6 twice, x, and then 2 goes into 8 4 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times. And then in both cases, we're going to bottoms up, giving us 2x minus 5 times 3x plus 4. Now, there are other ways that your parents may have learned, um, and it, if you want to ask them, they can maybe show you a different way. This is just one method, and I just find it's an easy method that can be used to factor any of the trinomials. So here's one final example. Now, this one is in quadratic form. It is not a quadratic because a quadratic starts with a leading um, exponent of 2, but it is in quadratic form because the middle term is exponent is half of the first term's exponent. So again, we follow the same procedure. We get two binomials, we bring down our negative, a negative times a positive is another negative, and then we're going to multiply our 9 times our constant, our leading coefficient times our constant, which gives us 90. And we're going to try to find the factors of 90 that when added are going to give us 21. Now, when we add 9 and 10, we're going to get 19, which is not 21. Oops, I forgot to put the x squared. So, let's go back and look at this. Our first term, instead of being x and x, is going to be x squared and x squared, because x squared times x squared is going to give me that x to the fourth. Now, once again, I have my two factors of 90, which is 9 and 10. And as I said earlier, when I add those together, because that's what I'm looking for as an addition, I'm going to get 19, which is not 21, so we cannot use that one. Then we're going to divide by 3. The first term, we're going to get 9 divided by 3 is 3. So we're going to multiply 10 by 3 to get 30. But when we add those numbers we get 33, which again is not 21. So this time I'm going to double the 3, which gives me 6. That means I have to take half of 30, which gives me 15. And when I add those together, I do indeed get 21. So these are the factors that I'm going to use. So I put the larger of 6 and 15 in the first binomial, which is 15, and then 6 in the second binomial. Remember, I have to compensate for that 9 that I multiplied by, by dividing each of the constants by 9. And then I simplify, getting x squared minus 3 goes into 15 5 times, 3 goes into th 9 3 times. And then I can divide the numerator of 6 by 2, and I mean by 3, and get 2 and then divide the denominator by no, of 9 by 3 and get 3. And then I can use the bottoms up method, get 3x squared minus 5 times 3x squared minus 2. That would be a 3x squared.
minus 2. And then I check to make sure that I don't have any bi perfect binomial squared, and I don't because 3 is not a perfect squared, nor is 5 or 2. So therefore, I am finished. We'll be looking at other techniques of factoring in the next lesson. See you tomorrow.